I think we could say that from the late 70s and throughout the 80s was the golden age of the mecha genre in Anam. And it is that in those days, a lot of animations of this type came to our televisions from the country of the rising sun. Let's remember that a robot manned and piloted by a human being is considered a mecha. And I knew it of all kinds, ships that were coupled to the robot, or several ships that became the robot. Or there were also several smaller robots that were transformed to assemble the super robot. And while all that was happening, we got a series that gave a twist to the way to assemble the fuse. In this case, we had three robots and their pilot combined into one inside the other in the purest style of Russian dolls. So without more to add today, I bring you Gordian the Warrior. Look, I don't know about you, but even after so many years, to this day, my hair stands on end every time I hear that intro. But before I start, I want to thank you for all the support that the channel has received lately. There are already a little more than a thousand of us in the channel who would have said that. Thank you all really. And if you come to this channel for the first time, don't forget to subscribe and share the videos so that more people can see them. And now yes, without more to add let's get started. Before I started collecting information for this video, my friend from the channel, I lived in the 80s, told me that this animation did not reach his country Peru, and then, while researching, I saw that the same thing happened in several other countries. So I hope this video shows you a little more about this excellent animation, and don't forget to visit the channel I lived in the 80s. I assure you that you really won't regret it. Known in English as Gordian, the warrior, was originally called Toshi Gordian in Japan. The series consists of 73 episodes and was originally broadcast from October 7, 1979 to February 27, 1981 on Tokyo TV. The series belongs to the genre mecha and action. In the case of Honduras, the series was broadcast from the mid-80s to the early 90s on Channel 7. I really don't remember that it has been rebroadcast on other channels, but you know if you remember more about it, please put it in a comment. This series had the participation of three directors, which Kunihiko Oi, Kasaki who also directed a couple of episodes of The Gladiator. Masamune Oshihai, who was also animation director in some episodes of Captain Future, and Mazinger Z. And finally Shigeru Yanagawa, who also wrote several scripts for Sailor Moon and Ranma. Now let's talk a little about the plot. The story begins a little after the year 2000, after a planet called Corners, and its two satellites Ugape and Scalp pass through Earth's orbit. The Ugape satellite gets trapped in the Earth's gravitational field, which causes the terrestrial landscape to change, turning the Earth into a deserted wasteland and destroying all the cities that existed until now. During that time, the survivors seek to rebuild society, and that's when Dr. Otaki starts a project to build a city in the desert, called Victor Town, which is going to be very important in the series because of its secrets. The anime begins when Dago Otaki, the son of Dr. Otaki, arrives in Victor Town to enlist in the 18th Regiment of the Mechacon Special Forces. Dago travels in his supermoto and is always accompanied by his pet Clint, who is a black robotic panther. During his first night in Victor Town, there is an attack by the Maddox, who are the forces that intend to take over the world, and all the secrets that exist in Victor Town, as well as eliminate all the people they consider inferior. According to their history, they have always been present on Earth, and some of their leaders have been characters like Genghis Khan. They are aliens, who come from the planet Dogma. During the attack, when the Mechacon forces are being defeated, a giant robot named Gordian appears unexpectedly, which defeats the Madoctor and kidnaps Dago. After this, Dago discovers that the robot was piloted by his sister Sari, who is seriously injured for having used Gordian. 
Until that moment, Dago did not know that he had a sister and also discovers that the Gordian robot was inherited by his father, and only he can pilot it. Thus begins the main story of Dago, who uses Gordian to protect Victor Town and fight the Madoder. As the story progresses, several secrets are discovered, such as that Dr. Otaki was working on something called the X Project, which included Gordian, Dago, Clint, and also something called the Extron Mineral, which is a mineral that has a life of its own. Since the beginning of the series, we are given a hint that Dago is not really what we all believe. Since Dr. Otaki whose consciousness lives in a computer like this Avenger role, tells Sari that Dago is, and at the same time is not his brother. As the series progresses, we will see who Dago really is. Now let's talk a little bit about Gordian. It consists of a giant robot, which contains its pilot, and two smaller robots inside. The first and smallest of the robots, is only slightly larger than a human, and its name is Prodezer. This robot carries Dago inside. His colors are red, white and blue, and his helmet reminds of those of American football, and in fact uses a weapon that has a similar shape to that of a football, which he uses to cross the legs of larger robots, and thus make them lose their balance. The second robot is called Dellinger, which is a little bigger, and carries a prosthetist inside. Dellinger is red and white in color, and uses a sword, and sometimes an axe to fight. Finally, we have Garvin, who is the biggest of the three, and carries inside him Dellinger and Prodezer. Garvin is white and blue in color. Once the three robots have joined Gordian, is complete. Gordian has different weapons such as missiles, that come out of his legs, he can also throw his fists, and also uses a great sword to fight, which is called Jen's sword, which was built by Dago's uncle. This sword can transform into a shield, and also launches missiles. And despite its large size, Gordian is quite agile. Now let's quickly get to know the main characters. Dago Otaki is the main protagonist of the series and the pilot of Gordian. He was orphaned as a child and was raised by his uncle Ken. He is always accompanied by his panther Clint and uses a pistol and a whip that gives electric shocks to fight. Sari Otaki is Dago's older sister. After the death of Dr. Otaki, she is in charge of protecting Gordian and Victor Town until the arrival of Dago. Chakoma and Reset are two orphans who live with Sauri and help her take care of Gordian and Victor Town. Barry Hawk is the captain of the 18th Mechacon Regiment, which is Dago's regiment, and he is the one who welcomes Dago when he first arrives in Victor Town. Peggy and Dalf, these are the regimental comrades and best friends of Dago, besides, Peggy is Barry Hawk's daughter. Dago saves her from being eaten by a crocodile at the beginning of the series. Like many series of the time, Gordian also had its toy line. In the United States, it was released under license from Gudaken, which was a line of super robot toys released by Bandai America. The figures included Dago, Prodezer, Tellinger, Garvin and Clint, which could be assembled as in the series, also included several accessory weapons. Each robot was listed one, two or three on the chest, although those numbers did not appear in the series. The truth is I don't know if these figures were distributed in Honduras, at least I never saw one. But you know that I'm not very knowledgeable about toys, so please you who do know put me in the comments. As I have read in several South American countries, they were distributed and as it could not be otherwise. There were also other versions either Chinese or Taiwanese of lower price, because apparently the original version is quite expensive. And as always, we can't forget to see who gave their voices to some of these characters in our language. This anim was dubbed in Mexico at the studio Procinius Skull in the year 1985. Dago Otaki was voiced by Alfonso Obregón who also voiced Eric from Dungeons and Dragons. Sari Otaki received her voice from Ada Morales, who also voiced Rita Repulsa from the Power Rangers. Barry Hawk received his voice from Victor Trujillo, who also gave his voice to Leonor of the Thundercats. Peggy received her distress voice from La Campa, who has also lent her voice to Melod, a de los Halcones Galacticos. Dalf received his voice from Armando Coria, who also gave his voice to Ander S from Lady Oscar, and finally, the Grandmaster Dacuma received his voice from Antonio Monsal, 
who also played the already iconic voice of Moonra the Immortal. Again, as with many anim of that time, the version with the Latin dub can't be found anywhere. I read somewhere that at a certain point, a collection of DVDs with that dubbing was sold, and I know that the Spanish dubbing from Spain is around on the internet, but it is difficult to get, and there is also the Japanese version, but it is not subtitled. Finally, I want to mention the opening and ending themes of this series, which were the best there were in those days. They were both in their original language, but we liked them so much that we all used to go there as kids, singing disc in Japanese. Both songs were performed by Dejiro Shiomi, who, as I understand it, had released several pop music albums in Japan, and was famous there. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if so subscribe, and give me a like. If the content of this channel is to your liking, I ask you please your support by sharing the video, because that would really help me a lot. As always, I send you a greeting, and until the next video, when I bring you another super robot.